are listening to the Free to Be Mindful podcast, which provides bite-sized tips for busy parents, educators, and anyone working with kids. These real talk conversations focus on mindful living, mental health, and personal growth, helping all to learn, grow, and inspire with mindfulness in mind. I'm your host, Vanessa De Jesus Guzman, educator, licensed professional counselor, entrepreneur, and mom. I'm passionate about helping folks live life with peace of mind and ease of heart while not losing their, well, you know, here we go. Hi, and welcome back to the Consult a Counselor series. In this series, I answer parenting related questions so that you can be present and at ease with your child and live life mindfully. Today's question is, it's been a week and my kids are still feeling the aftermath of the Texas tragedy. They're super scared to go to school. What can I do? I'm so sorry that your kids are still experiencing this and they have every right to feel scared because even we as adults are still feeling the sadness of what took place in Uvalde, Texas. What we want to do with our kids is let them know that they are safe. Now, nobody wants to be taken for a fool. And even a second or third grader will say, you can't say that it'll never happen because it does. So we don't want to say, well, that will never happen here because we truly don't know. And that is unfortunately the very sad reality. But the language that we may want to use with our kids is, we don't know what's going to happen, but here are the reasons why it is likely not to happen. I go into the knowledge that I know about schools, specifically in the state of New Jersey, so I'm not sure if this applies to your state, but I share with my own child and with my clients that first, the New Jersey state law is that all school doors must be closed and we can never prop a door open, and the only access that a stranger has into the school building is through the main door which should have a security guard there where everybody has to sign in and out. Most school securities are either former police officers or they even have police officers in the building or by the building in front of the school or on the campus grounds somewhere. I also go into the various types of drills that we have in school, and I emphasize that it's not only a lockdown drill or a shelter-in-place drill, but it may also be for a lot of different reasons. So if somebody falls and bumps their head in the hallway, we may want everybody to stay in the classrooms so that the hallways are cleared should EMT have to come in to take care of that person. Also working in suburban schools, I've had two experiences where there have been actual bear sightings on the school grounds. So we had to do a reverse evacuation where everyone from the outside around lunchtime had to come indoors to make sure that everybody was safe from the baby bear that was around the school grounds. So we want to explain to them that we don't only do these types of drills for this type of situation, but there are a lot of different situations why we want to practice so that we know what to do. We can also take this as an opportunity for kids to let us know what exactly are the different drills and if they know exactly what they have to do, and why. Knowing the reasons why things happen is typically very helpful for children so that they can be put at ease a little bit. Now, depending on the child's age, I may even share about the gun laws that we have in our state. Your state may be completely different, but typically in the Northeast, the laws are very different than in the South. And I use that to my advantage when talking to kids so that they understand that not anybody can just go by and carry a gun and walk around with a gun in the middle of the street. So again, can we foresee the future and know that this will never happen? We can't, but we can do as much as possible to make sure that our kids are safe and that they know that they are safe, especially while they're in school. 
It's also important that kids know who they can turn to within the school building if they see something that doesn't sound right or doesn't look right. Or if they overhear someone say something, they should know exactly who they can turn to. And hopefully the school has a positive culture and climate so that the principal, the school counselors, the deans, whomever the personnel may be, so that students can feel comfortable in approaching these personnel and having these types of important conversations. We also want to emphasize how important it is to have a positive relationship, not only with their teachers, with school administrators, but also with the police officers within town. It's really important that students see police officers as friendly faces that they can turn to should they need help. This is most definitely a challenging time. And unfortunately, it's something that we have to live through every so often. So sad. However, we can make a positive impact on our kids to let them know that we do our best, their schools do their best, and hopefully their communities do the best that they can to keep them safe. So I hope this helps. If you think that this could help another mom or dad friend, please be sure to share it with them and subscribe to the Free to Be Mindful podcast so that you don't miss the next episode. If you have any questions for the Consult a Counselor series that you'd like for me to answer, you can always email me at podcast at free to be mindful.com or DM me on Instagram at counselor V de Jesus. And remember in a world where you are free to be anything that you want to be, you are always free to be mindful. Thanks so much and catch you next time.